Hey, it's Alicia from MobilityMastery.com and I want to talk to you today about how to find the root cause of pain. If you're anything like me, then you've probably had some pain, maybe an injury that you're struggling with right now, and maybe you sought help from professionals and nobody could really tell you why you were in pain. Now, I think we can all agree that the medical model as it is isn't working that well, especially when it comes to pain. We have people addicted to painkillers, we have people getting cortisone injections and surgeries, but not necessarily finding that root cause and fixing or addressing the issue at that root level. And everywhere I look, there are people in pain. And I hear stories all the time of clients walking in my office or people emailing me, telling me, They've tried physical therapy, they've tried going to the doctor, they've tried massage therapy, they've tried psychotherapy and hypnotherapy and all the therapies and still they're not finding the root cause and they're still in pain. So why? That's what I want to talk about today and then what can we do about it? The number one problem I see with how we're looking at pain in the world as a whole, as a culture, is we treat pain as a problem, something that just needs to get snuffed out as quickly as possible. And that's why we have things like cortisone shots and painkillers, right? We just want to stop the pain. And this is because we think that pain is a problem, but the pain you're experiencing isn't actually the problem and it's also not going to provide you with the solution if you only focus on the pain. So where the pain is, isn't the problem. And in order to find that root cause of pain, we're gonna have to look at the whole body and person as a whole, as a system that is functioning together. So we have parts, but those parts are part of a whole. And in order to understand how these parts are affecting the whole and how the whole is affecting the parts, we have to understand what we're made of. We have to know what the human body is made of and how each part uh, you know, impacts the whole and vice versa. I also, personally, I'm just gonna add this in here, think that it would be wise if you are in pain to seek out help from somebody who has been in your shoes or similar shoes and actually figured things out for themselves and or other people, but hopefully themselves, because if we haven't gone through something ourselves and really figured it out for us, it's difficult to walk someone else through it. So if you're watching this right now and you're looking for help from somebody else to uh, understand why you're in pain and how to get out of pain, then I recommend you look for somebody who has a similar or had a similar pain or injury as you um, and or at least pain and they figured it out on that holistic level so they can walk you through it step by step having already been there themselves. So all of these things that we're currently doing as a culture to solve pain, they're really band-aid solutions. Uh, the things I already mentioned like painkillers and cortisone injections, also things like knee braces or back braces or things like surgery and even some, you know, uh, manual modalities like massage and chiropractic, if they're not looking for the root cause of pain and they're simply addressing the pain that you have. For example, I personally have a very strong rule for myself and it's something I would tell my clients that I will never allow a chiropractor to adjust my low back if I have low back pain. And that's because I've worked on people who've gone into spasm after you know, going to the chiropractor and getting an adjustment for low back pain where it made them so much worse. Uh, and I've experienced ending up in pain, worse pain, by having people work on what hurts. So I've gotten a massage before where she felt some tightness in my glutes and dug into my glutes for like 10 to 15 minutes trying to loosen it up. And my glute ended up spasming for a whole day. So anytime we're looking at the parts, we have to understand how they interact and why they're behaving the way that they are. So if, for example, uh, something is spasming, or if you have pain in your low back, or you have knee pain, or you have plantar fasciitis, the first thing you have to do is ask the question and be willing to look for the answer. Why 
is that spot giving you that pain signal? Why is that spot in your body um, getting your attention? Some, it's irritated, something is wrong there, but that spot isn't necessarily the problem and often going there will make it worse. To illustrate this, I wanna tell you a client story. And this is somebody who came to me in 2012, 2012, long time ago, and he ended up staying with me for the last seven years, working every week together to keep him feeling awesome. But when he came to me, he had almost given up trying to figure out his back pain. He had been to uh, some of the best physical therapists and doctors, people who did MRIs. Uh, he sought out the best personal trainers. And when um, he found me, uh, it was through a referral of a personal trainer who handed me like 40 pages of notes uh, from all the people who had tried to diagnose him the last two years. So these were notes from Rolfers, these were notes from uh, physical therapists and doctors, and then his notes as a personal trainer. And mostly what I saw in these notes when they were handed to me were notes about what they saw that was wrong with him, like where in his back, you know, uh, L5, S1, for example, or a little further up, there was something happening there. And then it was just like very detailed stuff about uh, what was wrong. And that's the thing, I think when we diagnose something, it doesn't tell us what's going on, it simply names a problem. Uh, and it's not necessarily enough to say, oh, you have a disc compression at L5-S1, or this nerve is getting pinched. Okay, that's useful information. But I want to know why. Why is that part of the body behaving the way that it is? What is causing it to do uh, what it's doing in that particular area. And in that very first session, he got 100% out of pain. Now we had to work together, uh, you know, on an ongoing manner to make that last every day, all day. Uh, but he was so happy that he got out of pain, he instantly bought a package from me and, you know, it's been seven years since. And that's just one example I have, you know, I get people walking into my office who are wearing um, orthotics for something like plantar fasciitis uh, and sometimes uh, it helps or cures the plantar fasciitis but they end up with knee pain or back pain uh, five six months later and then they come to me because suddenly they have pain they didn't have and they didn't necessarily link the two together but in my private practice I've realized that all of these things are connected if we had one injury at one time in our life it's likely going to affect uh, another part of our body unless we take care of the original reason we got that injury or pain in the first place. What I'd love for you to do right now is if you're relating to this, if you understand what I'm talking about, even if you don't know the answer or you don't know what I'm about to say as to how to find the root cause of pain, but you identify as being somebody in pain and seeking uh, help from other people who maybe were able to give you a diagnosis but not tell you what was really going on and solve it fully, please share in the comments below. And then I'm gonna ask you to share later too when we dive into how to find the root cause. So what do you do to find that root cause of pain? I've always approached working with clients from a certain perspective that I believe is what gets me my results that has less to do with the method and more to do with what I'm doing and why. When I work with a new client, we map their fascial system, which is, you know, the most abundant tissue we have in the body, that connective tissue system, it connects everything and it's abundant. And where the fascia or connective tissue goes, nerve impulses, joints, and muscles, muscle fibers follow. So the fascia leads where, what happens with our muscles and what happens with our joints and what happens with our nerve impulses. So I'm mapping the body when I work with somebody and I'm trying to come to their body with no assumptions of what is going on. Because if I try to use my head to figure out what's happening in their body, then I've already projected something onto them that may or may not be true. So I'm stepping on people with kinetics and this means I'm palpating their fascial system and it's a form of kind of call and answer. So I'm lightly palpating an area and asking it to respond and it will. And I'm looking for areas of density. Maybe some fascial adhesion is under there and we would want to find out. I'm also looking for reactivity in their nervous system and we're mapping things. I know I keep saying that. This is what it means. Um, I'm palpating and then we're doing some fascial release in their quads, 
in their quad hip flexors, in their IT bands, and their hamstrings, in their calves, and their adductors, and the TFL. And that is basically my full lower body session when I work with a new client. It has been for the last 10 years and it still is today because it works so well. We're looking for imbalances in that fascial system, front to back and left to right, and all of what starts to come up to the surface, all of the things that I feel when I'm stepping on my clients and all of the things that they feel when I step on them or when, we, um, when they move, when we start to release it, all of these are clues as to uh, what is actually going on, on in their body from a systemic or whole person level. So what does this look like? Well, let me use the client that I've been telling you about uh, when I first started working with him, I didn't know a whole lot about him. I had just met him. I didn't know what his sports and activities were necessarily, although he might have listed them on my intake form, but we get to actually see how his body is representing his activities. So this is somebody who likes to ski. He plays hockey. Uh, he likes to go hiking. Uh, he has his main activities. And then of course he does work out as well. Um, he plays golf and all of these things involve overuse of the right leg especially. So his right quad and his right adductor, for example, were definitely involved in his low back pain. He had low back pain on the left side. So if this side is out of balance, it can tweak or irritate something on the opposite side. And now we're starting to look at the whole body um, together and how the parts are affecting the whole. And on that other systemic level, he is an entrepreneur and he runs a lot of stress through his system on a consistent basis. As we worked together, we were able to move the stress he was feeling on a consistent basis out of his body so he could perform better in life. And he and I talked about this, that the work we were doing together was probably allowing him to take on more stress without it actually bogging him down. And here's the thing, when we're stressed out, our fascia is gonna be tighter. And so if you're not taking that into consideration and looking at that as part of the whole, then you might miss something critical that could be going on and contributing to the pain. So this is just one example, but it could involve emotions, something um, emotionally upsetting in life. It could involve trauma that hasn't been healed. And all of these things actually show up in the fascial system because of its relationship to the nervous system. And all of this can be palpated and felt with kinetics. And again, all of the self-help techniques that I have here on uh, YouTube and the blog, they're modeled after what I do with my clients. And you can do the same thing at home if you want to using foam rollers and lacrosse balls. You can contact that fascial system, uh, see what your nervous system reactivity is like when you get down and maybe you're on your IT band or your quad and it might suck a little bit, which indicates unhealthy fascia. Maybe you're locating those fascial adhesions and it, you can start mapping your own body left to right, front to back, and starting to see some of those patterns and how they relate to your activities, um, your, maybe your career, and if you're forced to sit at a desk, uh, all these things, right, that add up to shaping your fascia in the way that it's shaped right now. Everything that we've been talking about so far has to do with the first thing I said you must do to find the root cause of pain. And that is look at the body as a whole, understand what you're made of and how the parts are affecting the whole and the whole is affecting the parts. And I got a little ahead of myself and I started already diving into step number two, uh, but there's more to talk about here. And step number two is making it make sense, making sense of the pain that you feel. When our pain makes sense to us. It stops feeling scary and we know exactly what to do. So if we're willing to look at ourselves systemically and be willing to see what's actually happening inside our body without trying to figure it out ahead of time, then it actually allows us to see the path forward because how we got here is revealed and we need to kind of reverse engineer our bodies and our, maybe even our psychology in order to get back to a vibrant, healthy body again. Now, this client that I've been talking to you about, I'll use him again as an example. When he came to me, he had had so many people telling him, well, this is wrong with you, and this is wrong with you, and here's what's happening in your spine at this location, and here's what's happening at this other location, and they did an MRI, and this was happening. But none of those people could tell him why that was happening. 
and together in just a few short weeks, we were able to figure out not just what was happening and why inside of his body, but also what was happening outside his body, right, in his life, uh, like how he was using his body in life and how those activities were contributing to being out of balance and thus his spine being in danger and all of these cascading symptoms. So pain is really a symptom of an underlying problem. And if you only attack the pain and try to make it go away, then all you've done is take care of that symptom, but you haven't actually addressed the root problem. So this client of mine now knew that skiing and playing hockey and uh, overusing his right leg in golf, all these things were contributing um, to making him out of balance. Now the good news is he didn't have to stop doing those act activities uh, to stay out of pain. What he needed to do was take care of his body in a way where he could perform activities that are naturally kind of out of balance, but not have pain. And one of the amazing things to me about the human body is we can actually be stronger uh, on one side than the other. We can be out of balance in our sports. We can do activities that are kind of unnatural, really, for human bodies to do. But we can do that if we take care of that fascial system because it's more about the fascial system pulling uh, the muscle tissue with it and the joint out of alignment or compressing nerves or whatever. And that is why we get pain. So it has more to do with the fascial system than our muscles and activities. Uh, but we have to take care of it to live pain free. So how would you do this for yourself? Well, it starts with step one which is mapping that fascial system and maybe taking note of any nervous system reactivity. And you can do this with yourself on a foam roller or lacrosse balls, any mobility tools that you have at home. Uh, or you could learn kinetics and do it with a partner at home where you start to do this for each other. And what this looks like is you're palpating different areas of your body or your partner is, and you, if you're getting stepped on or you're on the roller, you're feeling sensations uh, that might be stronger in one area and not so strong in another area. Like maybe your right quad is really intense to get stepped on or put on a foam roller, but the left is not so bad. And then you start to notice there's some reactivity on that, you know, that right one, but not so much on the left or vice versa. And all of this starts to form a picture. If you can get curious about it, uh, either on your own or with your partner where you would start talking about it together and being curious together about why each area feels the way it does and why you're feeling the sensations you are and maybe why some parts are adhesed and some parts aren't, then this starts to inform that other picture of the activities that you're doing in life that might be winding you up, uh, fascially speaking, in certain areas uh, versus others. You can probably see how this is giving you a much more holistic picture of what's happening in your body, but not only that, how your life is impacting your body and how those parts are affecting the whole, or like I said, that whole is maybe affecting the parts. And you're gonna start to see some patterns arise with your fascia that will point you towards what is going on at that point of pain that we talked about earlier. And knowing all of this, naturally points to the path you have to walk to get out of pain. And hopefully, I would imagine, if you start to see it like this, it stops being so scary because it makes sense. This brings us to step number three, which is really about the solution now. We've identified uh, maybe the root cause, or at least we have a systemic whole picture of what's going on. And now we just have to get to work uh, and do that work to get out of pain. So this looks like, you know, either using uh, self-help tools like the foam roller or the lacrosse ball or learning kinetics or finding a practitioner who can work with you in this way. And then you need to be effective with your techniques. Now there are a few key things that must happen when you're doing the work to be effective and make sure you're mapping correctly and identifying those nervous system patterns maybe. And ultimately this comes down to staying curious, being present, so feeling what you feel, and if you're working with somebody else, uh, hopefully they're present as well, and not thinking about what they had for breakfast or you know, where they're gonna take their date on Friday night, <laughs> but actually being present to what's happening. Um, that allows us to actually see 
what's true, what's going on without our heads kind of getting in the way. And then we also need to have a feel for fascia, be able to feel when it's healthy, when it's not, identify different textures like brittle or crunchy versus just knotted up maybe, or strong muscle versus tight fascia. All of these things can feel a little different. And when you start to learn what each um, texture is that you're feeling and what that means about your body, uh, then it goes such a long way for you to be able to not only get out of pain fast, but maintain uh, your vibrancy and that spring and know at any point that you can assess your own body and know what's going on with it. So I wanna know, what is one takeaway for you from this video that maybe you hadn't thought about before or that feels new or really, really useful to you? And to that end, I want to know what you're gonna do to use this information to get yourself out of pain. Um, and you don't have to apply everything I just said. If you apply even one thing, you're gonna be further along than you were. So are you gonna map your fascia using some self-help techniques? Are you gonna learn kinetics and figure out how to do this with a partner? Are you gonna seek out a practitioner who can maybe help you do this in whatever modality they practice? Uh, I would love to know what your strategy is because if you're watching this and you're in pain, I don't want you to keep suffering. I do think pain is a necessary part of life. It tells us that something's wrong and I don't wanna see anybody suffer longer than they have to. So I'd love to see you get out of pain quickly. So please share with me below anything that's on your mind from what I've said. And if you wanna tell me how you're gonna use this information to get out of pain, then I would love to support you to do that. And thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, then of course, give me a thumbs up and maybe share it with your friends. If you'd like to join my email community, then you can actually try a kinetics technique for free. And you can do this by going to mobilitymastery.com forward slash subscribe. That link will also be below this video in the description. So give it a try and let me know what you think. All right. Have a great day, everybody. See you next time.